be to God. Glory be to God. And lastly, I'm reading that, thanking God for answered prayers and miracles happening in my family. Mm, glory. And wow, I see one of, of healing. Aaron said, I prayed, I prayed, and my chest pain went away. Glory. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Wow, they're flowing. They're flowing. My friend from uni came to Alpha. It was great to hear her speak about God. We've got to praise God for that one as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you, God, for, guys, for the testimonies. And, you know, we just want to just want to appreciate God in our hearts right now for what he's done in other people's lives and also in our personal lives. And as we're about to transition into a time of worship, I really want us to just set our hearts in a place where we're, 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 we're thanking God, we're appreciating God, we're aware of what God is doing right now, what he's done and what he's going to do in the future. So as I welcome the worship team, guys, we're just going to enter into a time of worship. Thank you. Holy, 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 holy,
It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you. It's your breath. It's your breath. to hear the cry that's in your heart. He wants to hear the song that is in your heart. Let the praise of your lips, of your heart, be poured out to him. In just your utterance. It doesn't even need to be sung, but just let him know with a whisper. Let him know with a whisper that your heart longs for him, that your soul cries out for him. He wants to hear it. He wants to hear it. He wants to hear it. In fact, there are things that can be communicated without even uttering a word. Mm. The Lord is here, guys. I don't need to tell you that. And he's come to meet every single one of us individually, individually. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to continue in worship, but let our posture be that we are here with the Lord. So it's just me and you, Lord. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. Continue, just continue in the same, in the same way, in the same way. Mm. See, melodies are powerful. Melodies are powerful. You can say so much to God just by a melody, just by a sound, by a sound. In fact, you can invite a very dimension of his personality, a very dimension of his spirit by just lifting up a sound, a sound. Mm. And in fact, only God knows what you need. He's the only one that knows what you need. So whatever he's stirring up in your spirit right now, to dance, whether it's to assume a posture, whatever it may be. He knows that that very thing is what will be able to host, host that 
which he wants to do in your heart. And I want to address, in fact, our online family as well, that God is not limited by a screen. He's not limited by a screen. And in your very room right now, the same atmosphere that is present here is more than available to you. So hold it by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Grace 
sing that again. I want us to sing that again. But this time with the awareness that you know, God's grace, God's grace it flows from a throne. It flows from a throne. It flows from a throne. From a place of authority. From a place of authority. And I want to let someone know in this room, someone online, that his grace is able to have full authority over your life, over your season. And just in case you couldn't come boldly to the throne of grace today, this very day, that same grace just came to find you. That same grace has come to find you. Lord, I pray, I pray that as we sing this song, as we sing this song, may your spirit minister unto us. In fact, you know, we've received confirmations twice today that there's angelic activity in this room right now. And anytime angels are sent forth, they come with an assignment. So I don't know what situation you're in. I don't know what season you're in. Just know that God has released provisions, provisions for every single one of us, for every single one of us. He wouldn't leave you out. Your situation is not too big for him. So we're going to sing that one more time but from a posture of faith. Oh gosh, that grace and mercy even though we couldn't go to the throne ourselves, even though we couldn't attain it ourselves, his mercy, his grace came to find us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Grace and mercy found me Oh, the blood of Jesus is greater
Give it up for the worship team, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, wow. Praise God. Praise God. And as we're all just taking our seats, I really want to encourage us to remain in the same atmosphere that we have just been brought into. There's, there's, there's activity right now in the room, and... We haven't even gone to the word yet. <laughs> so I trust that God is doing a great work in every single one of our hearts. And like I said, I just want to encourage us to maintain that atmosphere, maintain that same posture that we, we just got brought into in the time of worship. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'm going to run through these announcements. I'm just going to run through some announcements. And oh, this one gives me great joy, great joy. I'm very excited to announce... At Imprint Leicester back this coming Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nah, nah, nah. You, can, you guys can do better. Nah, you guys can do better. Hallelujah. Come on. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This one is very exciting. It's going to be starting on the 1st of November. On the 1st of November. The location is 123 Braunston Gate near Big Tesco. For those who live in Leicester, you will know where Big Tesco is. Announcements and further information will be out on our Instagram account this very week, so keep an eye out. The Instagram account is Imprint Church. Imprint Church without the you. Why? Because you complete us. You know how it is, man. Yeah. So doors will open at 5.45. 6 o'clock service will start. But like I said, more information will be out in this week, in the coming days. And also, um, following from that, the Leicester Link Up will still be flowing. Our Leicester Link Up will still be going this week. As usual, it will start at 6.30 every Wednesday, 6.30 on Wednesday. And for those who may not know, the Leicester Link Up is just a time where our Leicester community come together in Bible study and worship and in just fellowship and celebrating life with each other. So Wednesday, Zoom, Leicester Link Up, be there if you're not. That's your own, man. That's your own. Next, we have London Cruise. Wow. Come on, come on. Hey. I'm hearing certain cry. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I. <laughs> word on the choose is student hubs is the best cruise. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> I well, I don't know in it. That's what I heard. That's what I heard, man. That's. <laughs> that's what I heard, man. That's what I heard. Ch cruise is just a beautiful place where we, we have community, we have fellowship, we do life together for real. It's not just a statement, we really do life together. We come together to socialize and to study God's word and just to spend time with the, the people that God has surrounded us with. So cruise for London is Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. I believe they all start at 6.30 on Zoom. 6.30 on Zoom. And um, if you would like to sign up, please head over to our website, weareimprint.org forward slash cruise. Sign up and register for whichsoever cruise is, is better for you to, to attend. You heard the shout, so you know the one that you want to go to. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know what? I like your energy. I like your energy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give us just a classified intel. Classified intel. Student Hubs is cooking up something right now. There. Okay. So those online, if you're signing up, just be clever. <laughs> Student house, they're cooking up something right now that is gonna be gonna drop very soon. So just keep an eye out, keep an eye out on that one. If you want to get more information on what's happening on the on the socials, Instagram, Imprint London, check that out, guys. LDN, LDN, 
Amen, amen. And next we have Alpha, Alpha. Wow, 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 wow. Alpha is such an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Alpha is essentially a, a weekly online course and it's just a space whereby people of any faith, non-Christian, Christian of any faith come together and just discuss things pertaining to the Christian life, to Jesus, just to life. Bring questions, bring the things on your heart that you've always pondered about but you never received an answer. Alpha is a place where you're going to receive that answer. It's a weekly, every Thursday at 7.30, every Thursday at 7.30. It's a weekly session, fellowship until mid-December. So if you want any more information on that, please head over to weareimprint.org forward slash alpha. Sign up for that and yeah, we'll get you plugged in and we'll go from there. So please guys, let's, let's get that going. And next, um, I'm actually very excited to announce this. This one is Imprint Leicester are partnering with the Shoebox Appeal. The Shoebox Appeal. Wow, wow. I even remember when I was in primary school, this thing was, was going on. I'm sure we all remember that as well. And I think it's such an amazing initiative to really encourage children all over the world and let them know that there's people around the world that's thinking about them. And if you would like to get involved in this, all it takes is a shoe box. We all have shoes. And you just wrap it up. You gift wrap it. You put gifts, toys. <laughs> you, <laughs> you put gifts, toys, and of all sorts in that. And um, if you are in, so you'll see on the flyer right now that there are specified locations by which you can get involved with. If you're in Leicester or in the surrounding area, there's a location there where you can, set, you can bring that shoe box. And we'll take it from there. And uh, as well in London. There's a specified location where you can bring that shoebox and we'll, we'll give you all the information that you need to proceed with. So if you want to get involved, see the information on this flyer right now, write it down if need be, and go from there. And in addition, following on from that, in fact, you know, our community are really trying to get involved with different initiatives within the UK and around the world that are able to bless, are able to bless in any way, shape, or form. And Imprint is now trying to partner up with the initiative to end child um, hunger, to end child hunger. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the way that you can support this is by heading over to fairshare.org, fairshare.org, and you can donate five pounds and you know, support the initiative that, you're, that you're, you're, you're hearing actually happening right now. We've all heard of Marcus Rashford and what he's doing right now. Now he's charging ahead and just trying to bring an end to child hunger, which my gosh, it shouldn't even exist, but we thank God for what he's doing right now. So if you want to get involved with that, please head over to fairshare.org and donate five pounds or whatever you're capable of doing, and it will, it will, be, it will go a long way, it will go a long way. And lastly, or last two, in fact, we have join a team. Join a team, and <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> we have a variety of teams in Imprint, a variety of teams, and if you feel like you have a gift or any way, anything that you can contribute and help empower those teams, please don't hesitate to get involved. We'd love to have you. If you feel like that, please head over to weareimprint.org um, forward slash is it teams? Okay, forward slash, slash team and yeah, well, you can see the ones, the options there, whichever one works for you. And just get involved in the community and support the work that we're doing in this place. And lastly, we have get connected, get connected. And essentially what that is, is that at the end of service, you know, we want to get to know your, your lovely faces and your lovely people. But due to restrictions, we won't be doing that presently in this building. And so what we'll do is us, where's us? For those present, for those present, the lovely us will direct you and show you um, essentially who will be walking you to your bus stop, to your trains, to your tube stations, and just spend that time to just get to know you and just this fellowship. That's what we're trying to do. So at the end of service, please see us at the back of the hall, at the back of the hall, <laughs> and she will she will show you what you need to need to know, and they will walk you from there. So yeah, don't run away. Us is a lovely person, isn't that right, guys? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We love you, us. We love you, us. And yeah, for um, that is it for the announcements. That is it for the announcements. That is it for the announcements. I'm about to hand over to our minister of the word, but before we we even do that, um, of course, we have offerings, and offerings is a way by which you can partner up with what God is doing in this ministry, you know, in the same way that we would encourage one another and speak words of encouragement. Offering is a way that you can practically encourage the ministry that God is 
building within imprint. So all the details you'll see behind me and for those online, you'll see on your screen right now, the details are there. But please, HSBC, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We welcome you all. <laughs> we welcome you all. So while that's flowing, it's a great privilege. It's a great privilege and an honor to welcome up our very own, where, where's the, uh, our very own Pastor ST. <laughs> Pastor ST. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, bro. How's everyone feeling? Ooh. Wonderful. Just turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to the house of God. Oh, they can't hear you. They can't hear you. Make sure you're saying it very loud and clear. Say, welcome to the house of God. Amen. Did they respond? Did they respond? <laughs> oh, wonderful stuff. Um, yeah, it's always an honor. It's always a privilege to bring the word of God. Amen. It's something I don't take lightly at all, um, as I'm sure most of you would know. But the reason why is because I'm a firm believer that each and every single time that God can know is even a message that is less about um, scripts and notes and more so about me just speaking from my heart. And I believe God will bless you tonight. If you believe that, just say amen. amen. I can't hear you guys. Wonderful stuff. Just lift up your hands and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again. Thank you for the privilege that you have given us, Lord, to fellowship in your presence. Lord, this is a moment that we do not take for granted, O oh God. And we ask that you break down every preconception, every manner of human wisdom, the logic of man. Father, we put them to the side. We decrease that you may increase. Let every ego and any form of pride be dismissed now in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that the potency of your word shall touch our hearts this day. That none of us shall leave this place ever the same again. May we be transformed by the power of your word. We believe this. We know this. We acknowledge this, O oh God. And we ask for your spirit to show us the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter 1. Let's go. Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, I just want, want us to, once again, spend some time praying today also. Um, and I just want to just extract something that I believe will bless all of us. Genesis chapter 1, if you're there, just say amen. Um, it's a very long reading, so just bear with me. It says, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, someone say, then God said, uh, I can't hear you. Say, then God said, be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And so God made the firmament and divide the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, 
And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. He made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Verse 17. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the lights from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Verse 20. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves, with which the waters abounded, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature, according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and the beasts of the earth, each according to its kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Someone say, have dominion. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29, and God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Ten times in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, and God said. And God said. This is a God who knows all things. A God who is sovereign in in all his ways. He needs no man to complete him. Majestic all by himself. Meanwhile, in in his act of creation, the Bible says, and God said. I once read in 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, and the Bible says, God is light. And in him, there's no darkness at all. Now, if we compare that scripture with what we've just read here, we automatically have to pause at verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1. Because the, my Bible makes me understand that the earth was, 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 uh, was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Hmm. How is it that a God who's, who is light in his act of creating things, it seems as though he he is starting off with an incomplete... Is anyone understanding what I'm saying? This is God all by himself, powerful in all his ways. He is light. What that means is when God appears, the whole place has to be full of light. And we know that God is such a perfect God to the point where there is, is a contradiction for God to start his creation process with something that was without form. Meanwhile, this is where God chose to introduce us to himself. This is the power we become relevant in the things of God. We know that, the Bible says, from everlasting to everlasting. That means from eternal past to eternal future, he's always been God. Before you and I were, 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 were you know, you know, thrown into time. God had always existed. Meanwhile, we're introduced to a portion of scripture here that begins with chaos. You would agree. It sounds like chaos. The earth was without form. Darkness covered the face of the deep. 
But ten times the Bible said, and God said. How is it that God who is light, in whom there is no darkness at all, still finds the need to say? Is anyone hearing me at all? There's something that God wants to draw attention to here. I believe that what God is saying by introducing us in this way is to show us how that until you speak, hmm, until you speak, there will always be darkness. Until you, you say something, darkness will always seek to reign. And so, I have to keep telling you that God said, because I want you to understand who's talking here. It's not a man. It's not someone who can even die. This is God. But ten times, and God said. And my, my point of emphasis, you know, many things he said, as we've just read. But in one of the verses, it says, and let there be light. God in whom there is no darkness at all. He still went ahead and said, let there be light. Someone said, let there be light. This is a word for someone today. There's light that will come into your life by the end of this service. You don't believe, you don't believe, you don't believe. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, um, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible to have an encounter with God and never be the same. Impossible. And my prayer is that that revelation will sink deep in your heart. It's impossible. The woman at the well in um, John 4, I believe. And we hear a story. This is not part of what I'm preaching. But I just want to just share something very quickly. It's so powerful. Someone who has never met Jesus before. He knows nothing about this man. Meanwhile, on the strength of one encounter, on the strength of just one encounter, this woman's life was transformed. And not only that, because the Bible makes us understand that she went into, the, in her, into her town and said, come and see a man who told me all about myself. And what that did was it, it stirred up something within those people also to come and investigate. Your transformation is not for yourself, is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The moment you understand that, you will, you will, oh my God, you will make the most of every opportunity in the presence of God. Because there are generations that are dependent on your transformation. There are generations that are dependent on how robust you become in the things of God. What would have happened if men like Abraham and Co gave up because of some trials and challenges. We are seeds of Abraham, the Bible says. Where would we be today? Last week, I was here and I was ministering and I, I, I gave a scripture and some of you went and would you read it because some of you spoke to me afterwards about Hebrews 12 and so forth and so on. Powerful scripture. And all that I was trying to say there was when you read, especially from Hebrews 11 towards the back end of Hebrews 11 into Hebrews 12, you find out that there were great people of old who endured such strange forms of persecution. And then the Bible makes us understand that these were people who did not even, or, or rather that they knew that they would not even obtain the promise. Meanwhile, they went ahead and they still suffered at the hands of these wicked people. 
my God. They said, them who wandered in deserts and strange lands, they, 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 were, f- they were fed to strange beasts, tortured for you and I. What would have happened if their conviction was not robust enough? It is for this reason that Paul comes and speaks to us in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. And his whole, you know, point there is how that he wants you to be rooted in your faith. Is anyone hearing me at all? He wants you to be rooted in your faith. I'm saying that as a believer or one that wants to uh, do great exploits for God and so forth and so on, and just love God as much as you can so that you can influence your different spheres, I'm saying it will take a certain level of spiritual stability for you to be able to accomplish that. And so Paul, once again, comes and says to us that someone who's not rooted is like, you know, a, a, um, a seed that's, that's been tossed about by the winds. We've been moved to and fro. And I don't want this to be us. Amen. So, so, so it is in such a moment that God brings a word of this kind so that he can empower us. Ten times, I repeat. And God said, until you speak, your situation will never change. You know, science is very interesting because, um, I mean, I'm not a scientist, by the way, just in case I look like a scientist, I'm not a scientist. But, you know, I did, I never, am I a mathematician? Uh, you know, all the finance people, I see some of you here, I'm not that guy. I did English literature. Yes, yes. So, uh, I love words, is what I'm saying. Yes, yes, I love words. Um, but I remember one or two things from science. Uh, I was in top set, you know them ones. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, but the whole thing I'm trying to say here is that, according to science, please correct me if I'm wrong, scientists, There we go. Science makes us understand that um, there was such a thing as the Big Bang. Amen. And how that... No, I'm, I'm just... Follow me carefully. <laughs> uh, follow me carefully. There was such a thing as the Big Bang. And according to science, um, is on the strength of the coming together of certain... Uh, what would I call it, atoms or elements, the hydrogens and the heliums and the lithiums. <laughs> uh, so, 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 I'm speaking scientifically now. According to science, all of these things, what's that, the word, coalesced? Is that the right word? They, they co- 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 coalesced, you know? <laughs> Essentially, all I'm saying is, According to science, these elements came together. Um, but you know, the strange thing about um, helium and all these things, hydrogen, um, from my understanding, is that at standard room temperature, is not only colorless, it's also, um, yeah, exactly that word, you know, I, mean, I struggle to pronounce it. Um, but it's, it's colorless, essentially you can't see it, that's what I'm saying. And then we, this is science now. So basically what science is saying is that the material world that we see was made by the immaterial. Is anyone understanding that point? Is that, is that okay? Are we, are we on the same page? We're on the same page. Okay. That's science. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. When you're there, you just say amen. We don't want to spend too much time. Hebrews 11. Uh, is anyone there? Yes. So, from verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hmm. 
for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the, the elders obtained a good testimony. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. I, I, I want to repeat that one more time. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. What this scripture is also telling me is that the material world was also made by the immaterial. So at least science and Christianity agree. It's like we agree on that, on that one. Although they will never say very clearly that, you know. But from my understanding, science says what we see was made by the immaterial. Amen? And this is in the word of God is saying a very similar thing. But in verse 3, when it says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, for the theologians here and, you know, people that really go deep in the scriptures, you understand that there are, when we, anytime we speak about the word of God, we can, ultimately Jesus is the full embodiment of the word of God. Amen? I want to break it down very simply. When we talk about the word of God, Jesus is the full embodiment of the word of God. Meanwhile, we have the word of God in this form, the written word of God. So when we say, uh, are, are, you, are you reading your word, for instance, we're talking about the written word of God. Are we on the same page? Uh, and then we have the spoken word of God. The spoken word of God. Jesus is the Logos. We have the graphy, and then we have the rema. In Hebrews 11 verse 3, the word, word there is not talking about the logos necessarily. Neither is it talking about the written word of God necessarily. But it is making reference to the spoken word of God. So now, we are on the strength of that understanding, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the spoken word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. If you are ever trying to have something materialize, it must come by way of the spoken word of God. You must speak the word. My message is entitled, Speak the Word. Tell your neighbor, speak the word. I don't think they heard you. Say, speak the word. And someone might be thinking, all right, I mean, how... How does that happen? How is it so that, because you know, <laughs> you know, some people say, <laughs> uh, I mean this with all humility, but some say, um, just speak it into existence, you know? How many of you have heard that one before? Um, and um, the issue with that is, um, You can frustrate someone's life if you give them kind of advice, if that person doesn't understand this. It's not just merely speaking for the sake of speaking. It's true that life and death is in the power of the tongue. It's true. Amen? It is very true. And so really and truly you can speak and, and by, on the strength of the power of words itself, Things can happen in your life according to that which you speak over yourself. But I'm saying that when we're talking about this kind of speaking the word, 
This is how we as believers in this kingdom, we cause things to materialize in our lives. Not by wishful thinking is what I'm saying. Not necessarily even by merely pondering on such things in your heart is what I'm saying. It can be here, it can be here, but that's not good enough. It's not good enough. How many times do we make excuses? I was tired today, so, you know, just the, the thinking of it in my head was enough. And really and truly, that's also cool because God is, God, you know, I would say, um, there's a scripture that says, it's all my warfare. Uh, it starts off a very long way, then it says, uh, anything that you can, you can even imagine. What that's trying to say to you is that even your thoughts has the capacity to, <laughs> to cause a reality around you. Thoughts are powerful, guys. Very powerful. But that's not what I'm going. My emphasis is in, a, is in the fact that in order to cause things to materialize in your life, you need to speak the word. Your very salvation experience was found upon this principle. Amen? Romans 10.10. 10. Just to extract a point very quickly. Romans 10.10. 10. Um, and you hear the Bible say, let me just open it quickly. Romans 10.10. 10. It says in Romans 10.10, 10, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. Let me read that again. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The point is very simple. That even our salvation experience is tied to what we say. Everything in this kingdom is about Speaking is what I'm saying. When, when the disciples, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that story, and there was a storm. Amen. And many people have been conked out, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Even there, I just want to say something quickly. You know, it's very possible for Jesus to be sleeping in your boat. I speak in parables. Until you tap him and <laughs> parables. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Jesus, you can be sleeping in your boat. All because you didn't make a move to seek for him. That, that's by the way. But the Bible says that when Jesus, when, they, you know, when he woke up, he commanded the storm to be still. Once again, someone who is God all by himself, he spoke and commanded the wind to be still. Speak the word. You know, the, the, the stwen and he was that you spoke to you the other day is with it. And then this is what Jesus says actually in Mark 11, 23. Like I said, today we just want to pray. I, I want to put, or rather, I want to stir your faith. I want to stir your faith. Mark eleven twenty three. I'll start from verse um, 20. It says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. 
For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever, whoever what? Whoever says, or whoever says, whoever says to this mountain, he's talking about speaking now. Whoever says to this mountain, I don't know what mountain is in your life today. Maybe you came here with some kind of anxiety because they laid you off at work or something like that. Maybe. Maybe you have a family member that's, that's ill as I speak now. I came to let you know. The uh, Bible says the just shall live by his faith. Meanwhile, faith is an is a active thing. It's not passive. And in this context, Jesus is also talking about faith. And he says, whoever says to this mountain, the context of what Jesus is saying is faith. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying? And on the strength of that, he says, if you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea, it shall surely be moved. What is your mountain this day? As we spend some time in prayer, I want you to f- just forget about the possibility of what you're asking God for not being made manifest. Just forget that. Lift God up. See him as sovereign. The Bible calls him the El Shaddai. <laughs> uh, yesterday, someone stopped me and said, um, so, so how are you looking after yourself? And it was a long conversation. And I said, I've encountered the El Shaddai. I know the El Shaddai. That's not doctrine. That's not talk. It's not mere words. I know him. I don't need money in my pocket to let you know that I'm good. And that, in fact, I, I, can, I will wake up tomorrow and, and I will have something to eat. You don't understand what I'm saying. There was a season where I had nothing is what I'm saying. I mean, people say I'm broke. You don't know broke. <laughs> no, you don't know. You don't know broke. Yeah. It's by the grace of God that we're standing here. Can you, can you help me with the keys? You made the way. You made a way, and was standing here only because you made, you made, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over. You made a way. <laughs> and we're standing here only because you made. Say you made you. It's a prayer. Made a way. Just rise on your feet and let's sing this song. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked, and it looked as if it were. Oh, you made, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made. Say you made you. Come on, lay your voice rest. Made way. The fact that you're standing here right now, he's made the way. Yes, against the wall. And it looked, and it looked as if Oh, you made you. Made Standing here only because you 
say you made you made Lord we're grateful we're grateful when our backs are and it looked and it looked as if it was It's a prayer. It's not a special number. This is the time that you want to speak into that situation. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know. But as we're singing this song, God is breaking walls down. God is breaking down walls. Mountains are moving. Is it a financial challenge that you're facing? That mountain is being moved now. That mountain is being moved now. Any physical pain is being moved now in the name of Jesus. In the name of receive your healing. I don't know what family member is, is, is in pain now. We command them to be healed now in the name of Jesus. We speak forth the word that they shall be healed. Let them be healed. Lama habaraha shatabai. Only because you. Oh, you move mountains, yes, Lord. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform it. Oh, there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because. You, you move mountains, you move mountains. You're declaring this now. Just go ahead and declare it. Declare it. Declare it till you believe it. Records. There is nothing that's impossible.